welcome to Even Odds. Yeah, Warhammer Wednesday. Warhammer Wednesday. Today. Yeah. As you see, we've got everything assembled. Uh, we followed uh, our little pre-generated characters. Um, yeah, so hopefully, the kill team you, box come with, comes with the uh, pre-generated character cards. Yep. Hopefully, if you're learning uh, along with us, following along, then uh, you've done the same. Uh, so it'll be pretty easy. Um, what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to talk about how to play kind of go through the core turn structure. And then later on uh, in the future, we're gonna go over sort of advanced rules and uh, and more, okay? And more. And more, Again, wow. with, we're, we're taking you on a journey. Yeah, a whole journey. We'll teach you how to paint, we'll do everything. Team more hammer. Yeah. yeah, so uh, so there we go. So, all right. All right, so yeah. Let's talk about the Let's rules. Let's do this. So, um, a uh, high level overview. If you've got your core rule book and you want to follow along, Which, please, yeah. we suggest doing so. Mm -hmm. It actually also might be beneficial if you grab one or more of these pre generated data cards so you so can see, you, can kind of just see uh, what's going on with you know, it. what we're talking yeah. when we reference certain things, okay. what we're talking about. So, so, it's, so we're doing this from the standpoint that you would not have played Warhammer 40. Hey, right, before, you've never played. Or whatever, so... Right, if, um, if you have played, if you've already got a good handle of the rules, maybe uh, maybe this part is not for you because this is just a real basic look at the rules. Right. Maybe you just want to skip forward and just watch that. Uh, but yeah. if you're new, you never played, this is a good okay. overview of the basic rules. So Warhammer, both Kill Team and 40K, goes in a... Goes, there's a number of rounds, rounds right? Yep. So there are rounds, and within each round, there are um, six. So, yeah, phases. six six phases roughly. Six yep. phases ish. Yep. I think Warhammer is not Warhammer 40k is not exactly. There's extra phases there's in 40k. Kill phases. team. Is, I thought it was one. Is it more than one? It might just be one. Okay. Uh, um, there's kill at least team is one kind of extra a phase, and it's reason. there's one. Thing that's a little bit different. A little different However, yeah. um, as what what I understand is that by learning still this, you're gonna still be getting like basically the Absolutely. roughly the yeah. idea of how to play 40k. Yeah. If that's like your end goal yep. with getting into kill team. Yep. So when you sit down and you want to play a game, first thing you're gonna do is actually you're gonna pick a mission. Now the missions in the book are found after the core rules uh, in a chapter uh, fittingly enough called missions um, so you'll pick your mission and then that will tell you uh, what you're what you're going to uh, so you just do, sort basically. of okay so this is actually something I've been unclear. you just pick one right like you just, sure. you just go, so I'm just gonna open the book and like so you could basically just randomly do it you could take the time to like look through it and see if there's yep. something that sounds interesting I guess absolutely or? you can you can roll a die and pick randomly or you can just read through them and say, I want to play this, that, or the other, right? A lot of this is uh, what those of us in the Warhammer world call forging the narrative. Okay. So you want, there's like a story alongside all this, right? Okay. So uh, for so today, we'll, like we'll do uh, the narrative play mission, Disrupt Supply Lines. Okay, how did you pick that one? You just I just randomly? picked. Oh, really? I just thought it was a good okay, one for example like purposes. One? Yeah, I think so. Okay, um, so Disrupt so, Supply Lines. So, You're going to be disrupting the supply lines yeah, into that's on, this fair city yes, of that's, ruins that people are yeah, trying to survive in. Right. Um, that's on page 52 if you want to follow along. So we've picked our okay. uh, narrative play mission, Disrupt Supply Lines. Okay. Okay. Then you'll go, uh, you'll just follow it. Uh, if it's in two columns, you read left to right, just like everything else. The kill teams, this is a mission for two players. Okay. We've Yay. got our two players. So now, um, <clears throat> when you set this board up with the Citadel included mm -hmm. terrain, so all of the terrain we have right here is what's in included the Included in the kill team okay. box. And um, you can add more if yep. you'd like. Absolutely. Or take this off and put your own terrain on. Uh, but this is a what three by three 
three foot by two foot or just under it's a okay. 30 inch by 22 inch so it's okay. it's just under two foot by three foot okay cool and you just <clears throat> sort of put these out right you did, so did i you i put these out the... on the so well let's follow it along okay. right kill teams two players you select your kill teams we're just using the kill teams provided right out of the box okay uh we're going to pick which one of us wants to be the attacker and which one wants to be the defender. Okay. I think thematically, because you have the ad mech, mm -hmm. it would be more thematic for you to be the defender. Okay. Uh, so unless you have any objections, we'll just do it that That's way. That's fine. Cool. The battlefield. Create the battlefield and set up terrain. An example of how you might do this is shown below. And what I did is I actually just followed oh, okay. that as close as possible with the terrain we have okay. to what they show in the example okay. okay so the way it generally works is you kind of want to have it sort of somewhat balanced because you're going to be taking and, and this one is the case you kind of have one side is one team's area and then the other side just is to the other start teams. and so on and so you're kind of coming at each other and so because you you hide behind certain things and that affects how you can move and and all of that, you do want it to be dispersed fairly evenly, unless you're mm -hmm. playing narratively in a sense of that you want one side. You want to one have side to have an advantage, an advantage mm -hmm. over the other. So these are all variables that you can decide on for yes. yourself. Okay. So then, uh, the battlefield. Right. We've set up our terrain. Then the defender places three objective markers. Those are provided in the box as well. Uh, we've punched them out, okay? That, that's these, um, uh, what is it, octagonal? No, one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six. Yeah, right? Octagonal? Yeah, octagonal? Yeah, octagonal, octagonal objective octagonal. markers, okay? Octagonal. Uh, and there's, there's rules on how they are to be placed. You can read those, okay? Scouting phase, resolve scouting phase. Deployment will roll off. We'll deploy our guys one by one. Then we go to battle lane. Okay, at the end of battle round four, so that's what we were talking about, right? The game is played in a series of rounds. This one goes to round four, and then you might go to five and six. Mm -hmm. And then there are victory conditions and, uh, and tactics, which we'll go over later. But let's go to the core rules now. So okay. as you get better at playing with the rules and everything, your games will go a little bit faster. You've yeah. said that you've done kill team games now with some of your more um, uh, Experience. experienced uh, other fellow players that you've kind of played a, a game like 45 minutes to an hour. I yeah, thir 30 to but 45 even. Our first game the other day, I think, took at least a couple of hours. So Right, but that's you know, everything. That's learning the rules, getting set up. Checking sort of, things, yeah, you know. Yeah, so, the battle round, there's six phases, okay? Initiative, movement, psychic, shooting, fight, and morale. Now, don't get overwhelmed. Yes, don't get overwhelmed. <laughs> I get overwhelmed, even now. Yeah, you're <laughs> not... You're, but you'll get used to it, I guess. Yeah, well, you're not necessarily going to interact with every phase of the game every round. For, for example, on round one, nine chances out of ten, you're not going to interact with the fight phase. Nine times out of ten. Well, we're going to find we'll out. We'll find out. We're going to see. So initiative phase works easily enough. You just determine which player has initiative. You do that by rolling 2d6 each and so seeing who D6, rolls highest. So 2d6 would be two just regular yep. dice that are six-sided dice. And you just roll it and to see you find out. Whoever has the highest number has initiative for the rest of the phase, for the rest of the round, excuse me. Okay, then you move into the movement phase. All right, now this is where we said you might want to grab one of these to follow along. What you'll do is one, whoever has initiative starts, they're gonna move everyone on their kill team, okay? Their movement stat is gonna be on the card here under M, all right, and it'll say some number of inches. Mm -hmm. Well, you, this is 
this is skipping over deployment, though, because you still have to initially deploy all your guys on right, the table. Right, but we'll we'll so this take is care of okay. That so later. movement phase is at, well, but that's step number one. I mean, you got to get your guys on the board. So you don't just line them up like this at the end or anything. You get us. You get a deployment zone according to your mission. And then right, and then you, you put, put your guys and there. But there's so many. Why I skipped it is there's so many variables as to how you might want to deploy that it's maybe easier to maybe easier to touch on deployment a little bit. Yeah, later. but I just meant as far as the understanding of like when you do movement. Right. You know, you're talking about that you would have already like uh, I mean, I don't know. Like if I was new, if I was completely new, I'd be like, "Well, okay, okay. well, let's let's like, talk about it." What are you it. talking about moving? No, I mean, it's fine. Like so yeah, that's just just as a preliminary step, though, when you first start playing the game, you have a deployment yeah. zone according to the mission, which will vary. Yeah. And then depending on what your end on goal, on what your goal in the mission the is, mission is, how you put your guys, but there is that vary. initial point of like, okay, so we're gonna take turns putting our guys on the board. Yeah. And then from there, you would move all of your guys at once, right? Yes, one player moves all of their guys. On the card here, you'll see a movement stat, M, okay? Uh, now, in this particular uh, thing, Admech and Gene Stealer Cults, everybody has a six-inch move, okay? So that's pretty simple to start off. As you expand, as you maybe move into other factions mm -hmm. or things like that, um, things might have different movement stats. But for this, everybody has a six inch move, okay? So you would move. Your options during movement is you can move, you can advance. When you advance, you would take a D6, roll it, and then add the result to your movement stat. So in this example, I rolled a two. So I would take my six inch move, I'd add two, I have an eight inch move, okay? So as is the case with all of Warhammer, you have all these complex sub choices. So the reason why you have all of these different movement options is because each one would have pros and cons to other elements. Correct. So, yeah. You know, you can either move your standard six inches, or if you said um, you advance, which means you give yourself extra inches when you mm -hmm. roll a die. Well. You might want to do that, but you might not want to because it also then takes away something from your um, options. Yeah, from your options in later. Another part of the game. So right. that's part of your. You have to know, like, think about what you are wanting to do and whether it it benefits you more to it, to move your guy further along in the board or to have the other options the like other being thing. able to shoot. Right. You know. So that is primarily what it is. That's right? that's you, really the big one. Yeah, yeah. If you move further along on the board, you can't shoot you might somebody. Not, yeah. You might not be able to shoot. Or you might not be yeah. able to. But there's so, variables with that. Too. Right. Anyway. There's there's a lot of variables. So we're like I so said, we're just doing kind of a big overall, okay? You also have the option to ready to ready your your uh, you know, model. You would take no movement and what you would do is you would take a ready token and drop it next to him, signifying that he is readied, okay? What that does is it allows you to shoot first when it comes to the shooting phase later on, okay? All right, so you would be able to move him six inches and still shoot, but he might be shooting after someone else, by which right. case he might already be he dead. He might be dead before he gets to shoot. Where he would never get to shoot. So instead, if you're like, well, I can shoot from there, and I just want to be able to shoot the shoot other guy first, first. Then you would just have, ready. Yeah. Okay. You also, if you are within 12 inches of an enemy model, you can choose to charge. To charge, you'll take two D6, so two die. You'll roll them together. And that is your charge range. If it's enough to reach your target, that's a success. If it's not enough to reach the target, that's a fail. Okay? Okay, so the reason why it's 12 inches, the reason why you have to be within 12 inches is because 
you roll the two d6 to determine how far you can move for right. that charge. And, and the, the maximum, maximum is, 12 is 12 because there's the maximum yep. 12. So that's an easy way to remember that so that you, you can decide you want to try to charge, but it's not a guarantee. And you have that, and it has to, and you have to land within within, within one, one inch. inch. So you have to be right up in their face. Yeah, good etiquette and good practice is before you roll the charge, measure, see how much you need. So, for example, if these two are six inches apart, I roll these. I know that I need to end within one inch. And they're six inches apart, so I need to roll a five or better to succeed. Right, so that's a pretty, that's pretty good odds. <clears throat> right, right. right. So, but let's yeah. say they're 11 inches apart. Right. I would need to roll a 10 or better. That's pretty risky. Yeah. Okay. So. And when you charge, your opponent has an opportunity to react. Okay? Mm -hmm. And a react has two options. They can either retreat which is they move three inches backwards or they can fire overwatch so they get to shoot at you uh, in a special way that only hits on sixes okay okay so to to now we had this um happen when we were playing the game before if the other person is obstructed and they can't you, see like you could still potentially charge somebody but the you know, because they would be within the right amount of inches, but they can't see you so they right can't now. Fire so Overwatch. they can't try to retaliate, which right. is basically what that, or they try to like defend themselves really quick. Right. And so, but they can't because they can't. They can't see, see them. Yeah. Um. So there's that. Yep. Right. So, so then, in that case, your only you option is retreat. to either retreat or just let them charge. Or just you, let them. Just right? let it happen. Yeah. Which you know has again is you know has its has pluses, its and, pluses minuses. and minuses. Because if you retreat, then they can still they can still charge. make the charge. They can still make the charge. Yeah. They just have to get extra inches. Right. Exactly. Um, and then the last option only comes up if you're if you start. This will be in round two through the end of the game. If you start already in combat, you have the option to fall back, which is to move out of the combat, but then again, there's pluses and minuses. You cannot shoot, for example, if you mm -hmm. fell back, okay? And now there's a lot of intricacies in here. There's a lot of exceptions to these things, uh, but like I said, this is just a sort of basic yeah. get you started right. to play. Um, you can read a lot of these things, uh, you know, as you're following along. Right. Okay. But just a little bit more with that, though. So the thing was, okay, so so far you have standard move. Move. Okay, you can advance, advance. which lets you move further, but then you can't shoot with a regular mm -hmm. gun, um, you, you know, but again, there's exceptions. Um, or you can charge, which forces someone else into hand-to-hand -hand hand combat, hand. okay? Now, that other person is forced into it, which is mm -hmm. why you would potentially want to fall back on your right. own turn, because that's the only way that you can get out of that hand-to-hand -hand right. combat, which otherwise is basically a combat to the death, right? Basically, yeah. You know? So, you know, it takes away any ability for you to shoot mm -hmm. or whatever, but it's the only Keeps way you to even combat. get out of combat so. at all. So... Those are your okay. three major options for moving right. then, right? So that's yep. what everybody does. First they Everybody first they moves, move. then everybody on the other kill team moves. Okay. okay. So now in in the kill team, everybody moves all their guys all at, at once, once, right? Yes. Okay. So all of Admech would move, and then all of Gene Steeler Cult would move. Okay. Then you would be done with the movement phase. You'd go on to the psychic phase. Okay. okay. So phase number phase number three. Three, yes, excuse me, three, yes. Which it's kind, of, which I mean, initiative phase, calling that an entire phase is kind of weird, right? Because it's, it's it is kind of weird. It's just rolling to at the start dice, of the turn. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's so. a very short phase. Yeah. Okay. Now, psychic phase uh, is when if you have any uh, psychic members so certain, of your kill team, certain, certain guys will. Yeah, certain kill teams have them. Certain kill teams don't. 
Uh, like they would get to cast most don't right? currently. Team, yeah, least. currently there's only two factions that have psychic. Okay, so we're not going to go super in depth here. Basically, psychic phase is this: you would choose a power, you'd roll two d six to see if you cast the power. If the total of your dice is enough to match the the uh, warp charge of the of the uh, power, then it succeeds and the power goes off. If it's not, it fails. Um, that's pretty much all we're going to talk about the psychic yeah. phase. So what because... are the two factions? Okay, so the two that come in the box being Gene Stealer, Colton, and Adeptus Mechanicus do Neither not have, have psychic. psychic. You said it's Thousand Suns. It's Sons Thousand and Suns and Grey Knights. Grey Knights. Those then... are currently the only two that have psychic and Basically, options. it's the concept of like a wizard type thing or having magic right so it would be like okay so you're in battle you moved and now if there's anybody that's like a wizard and has magical powers they can you kind of get to do that first right. and take that advantage before right. you then begin the rest of the battle right okay right okay so then uh, phase number four phase four the shooting phase now you're going to interact with this phase every round this is this is the money phase so to speak okay and it's split into two sort of uh, steps the first is models who readied so remember when we said that was one of your options in the movement phase mm -hmm. is readying oh yeah that was your fourth option yep there were four options in so right. now anyone who readied gets to fire first okay then once if both players have models who ready, it's whoever has initiative, initiative. gets to fire first. Going and so you go one, yeah. yep, you go back and forth activating models to shoot until all readied models have fired. Then you go to models who did not ready, okay, and they fire. And as you fire, you, you can take your shot tokens and just put them next to your guys to remind yourself yeah which is nice that this it comes with those so yeah. yeah so that you have that way of marking that yep. now that's actually a key difference and that's why i was saying to clarify okay so you move everybody at once you right you move everyone because at once because when you're shooting you you're go not back and moving forth. every you're not shooting all of your guys at once you're right. going back and forth and that is very different than from a full right. Warhammer 40 right it's massive it's so different that we're not even going to talk about it <laughs> well but if if somebody's using this to get into it just as like an aside that is right. different but we so can do we can do a big primer for that later but, on. yeah but you would be doing all of your shooting at once and that right. is how this kind of differ so in a way Major is that difference. this gives you that like that more quickness of mm -hmm. a back and forth yes. um and so you're shooting so you you've got your 10 well we have 10 you, you might, might have, have more you might have, have less more or less than that but um in this starting thing so you would go one guy one guy two two three three so on yep so shooting phase works like this all right like we said first all you would activate all your models who ready, then you would activate models who didn't ready, okay? And it, one, when you fire with a model, there's a sequence you follow, it's really simple. First, you choose the model who you're gonna shoot with. Nice and simple. Again, this is right, you might wanna grab one of these cards to follow along. Maybe grab, uh, grab two cards of our two guys who are here, right? So, first you would choose a model to shoot with, We'll choose this guy, okay, to shoot here. Then you choose your ranged weapons and targets, okay? Now, you have uh, a couple different weapon options, okay? You would pick which one you want to fire, okay? And all these different guns have different types of rules. We're not going to go super into them, but you can follow along the rules for the type of guns. Start on page 29 and finish on page 30. Okay, so you would well, choose. The big thing to remember, I think, with guns is just some of them are assault weapon guns. Sure. Right, and some of them are not, and the well, ones and that then, are. And then some of them can be fired along with other weapons, and then some of them can't. So again, that's one of those things. Complexity. Some of those things follow along in the book. Okay, 
right? So, for example, pistols and grenades, if you choose to fire a pistol or a grenade, you cannot fire other weapons. But if you have multiple rapid fire weapons, for example, you could fire all of those. Okay. Okay. So you would pick your model well, to assault, activate. Assault weapons you can fire. You could fire all of your if assault you, weapons. Um, if you charge, or I mean, if, if you, you, uh, advance, you advance, right. So if your if your gun is an assault weapon, then you can still use it even if you advance in your movement. Phase. Right, but you'll take a minus one, which we'll get into. <laughs> okay. Complexity. <laughs> uh, so you'll resolve your attacks. Okay. Now to resolve an attack, first you have to make a series of die rolls. First, a hit roll to determine what you need to hit. You'll look at your model card here, and you'll go to BS, which is Ballistic Skill, and it'll have a number with a plus sign next to it, okay? That's the number you need to roll on the die or higher. That's the plus. So, for example, this gentleman has got a 4 plus Ballistic Skill, so that means I need to roll a 4 or higher, okay? Then, if your hit succeeds, you'll make a wound roll. To do that, you'll compare the strength of the gun, in this case, strength three, to the toughness of the target, in this case, toughness three, and you'll consult a chart, which you can find a handy reference at the back of the book, okay? Uh, and the chart tells you then what you'll need to roll. So in this case, strength three, to toughness three is equal to the toughness, so you'll need to roll a four plus again, so a four or higher. So you said in past um, Warhammer 40k editions that was a lot more complicated. A but lot this more is complicated. Actually, fairly. This is very uh, simple. Forward. Very very so, simple. Yeah. But to, once you've played yeah. like two or three games, you'll have it memorized because it's it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, but basically, also just to kind of. So when you're shooting somebody, you know, first you're you're shooting them, and that's a and that's a question of whether or not you're actually you might not hit. even shoot them successfully. Then even if you do, you you're might not, not necessarily wound them. good because you might not even hurt them at all. You might not wound them. Yeah, and if okay? you do wound them, and then, if then you do wound them, your enemy can save. They make a die roll and consult their SV, the save characteristic, and, and you're if they... Like, no, 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 you will not hurt me today. Right. <laughs> okay, then... I will heal myself. Yeah, they might save or they might not. If they don't save, then they will take damage equal to the damage D characteristic on your weapon, and... Which even furthermore... Right, may or may not may or hurt, may them, not hurt them, them greatly. Yeah, because, and, and that's another, that has even more depth in Kill Team mm -hmm. versus War, because in Warhammer it's just a direct, do they get a wound, they right? They just die. Do yeah. they, or, well, it has to do with the number of wounds that the model right. has to absorb, but in here, you now you, you're, you're rolling to see if they're just right. like. So then you go to the right? injury roll and. Again, these are things I, you know, I hope you've been following along because there is a lot. Um, and then the injury roll, you'll roll, and if you consult the uh, the injury table on table thirty on page thirty two, and if you've rolled appropriately, they'll either take a flesh wound or they'll be out of action. And out of action is they're removed entirely. A flesh wound is you. Put a flesh wound on them, and then. Wait, do we have a? Oh wait, you do that on their card. Yeah, you right? do that on their There's card. Something. There's a box for flesh yeah, wounds. which you're supposed to check mark. Which I don't. I mean, I don't yeah, know why you might. Yeah, you might, you might not want to. your do that. card. We were yeah. just using. Um, we were dice using dice. To you know, yeah. Show that. But, uh, and that's that. Okay, now. There's a lot of modifiers to these rolls. For example, on page thirty. There are hit roll modifiers, which you can follow, okay? And on 32 for the, for the injury roll, there are injury modifiers that you can follow. Um, 
and they're pretty self-explanatory. We're not going to go over them right now, uh, just for the sake of time. But you can follow along and uh, everything. But don't, understand don't that. Don't worry about it too much. Yeah, so. the the just modifiers. You can, as you're playing, it'll be easier. To yeah, it's understand. easier to understand when you're actually playing. Um, the modifiers affect the die roll, not your ballistic skill or anything like that. So your ballistic skill for this particular character is always four plus, but the die roll is what becomes modified by the modifiers. Okay, so after you're done shooting, you may or may not be going into the fight phase. Okay, the fight phase, if anyone is within an inch of each other, you'll fight. Okay. So that has to do with the charging. So that has to do with charging, the right? If you had, if you had either charged into someone or, or then were charged. charged into by somebody, and You'll you go didn't to, um, retreat from right. that successfully or whatever, you are forced into fighting. Yes. Which is a melee, hand-to-hand -hand combat, which yep. has a different type of weaponry that you would potentially yes. have on your cars. So, in the fight phase. It follows the same sort of thing as the shooting phase, where anyone who charged, which is this token, anyone who charged gets to fight first, and you go back and forth activating charging models, then you go to models who did not charge, okay? And the sequence for the fight follows the exact same sequence as shooting, mm -hmm. where you you pick a model to fight, okay? You choose the target they're going to fight, which has to be someone they're within an inch of. You choose the weapons they're going to fight with, and then same exact thing, you roll to see if you hit, checking their WS weapon skill. You roll to see if they wound, and then roll to see if they save, and then an injury roll if applicable. And that's fight phase is done. Then morale phase, okay, There, there's a sequence so you've here. Been, you've shot and been shot at. You've, you've fought, fought and been fought, fought at. at. <laughs> Punched in the face, and now. And now you see if your team is, your is team, brave enough yeah, to continue. Are they, are they willing and ready and able to continue the fight? Right, so now we're on page 36, okay. Morale sequence, check if your kill team is broken. Step two, remove shaken tokens, which that'll only be applicable once someone That's has been yeah. shaken in a previous round. Which and has three, to do with all that, yeah, yeah. stuff of rolling. Right. Just <laughs> <laughs> basically everything. Anyway. And three, take nerve tests, okay? Check if your kill team is broken. It's very easy to see if your kill team is broken. If everybody in your kill team has a flesh wound, is shaken or is out of action, then you're broke. Then you broke. Okay. Now, if not, then you're fine. But you may need to test. Okay. If you have more than half. Now, for for this again, if you're playing, if you're playing with the starter set, it's actually all very easy to understand because they've made a very simple starter teams to weigh by. There's ten models in your team. More than half is six. So if six or more of your models have flesh wounds, are shaken, or are out of action, then you test if you're broken. You'll roll 2d6 and compare to the highest leadership characteristic, which is LD, on the, on the card. And if your roll exceeds that leadership characteristic, then you break. Breaking is very bad. Well, you'll see that if you're following along what happens with being broken, okay? Remove shaken tokens. That's only gonna be applicable if a model has been shaken in the in a previous turn. So if, if it's that turn takes one- place in- um, Only the morale phase. Well, but Okay, so and only the models get shaken in, in the, the morale, morale phase. phase. So 
a model that gets shaken is going to be shaken then for, the, for entire the entire rest next of next turn. turn where they can't do anything. anything. The cab- a shaken model can do so nothing. So it's only at this point a full turn back into the morale phase that you can right. unshake them. Right. So and it's important to note that so on turn 1 no one's going to be shaken. There's no, there's litter it's impossible for anyone to be shaken to have their shaken token removed. Then you take nerve tests, okay? So if your kill team is broken, everybody in the kill team will take a nerve test. Otherwise, if you're not broken, only models with flesh wounds will take a nerve test. To take a nerve test, you roll a single die and you compare that to their leadership, then with the relevant nerve test modifiers on page 36. If they, if that role with any modifiers exceed their leadership, they're shaken. If it does not, they're not shaken. And a shaken model can do literally nothing for the entire next Now, turn. I think as a side note, there are some tactics, right? Or other abilities that can kind of change that a little bit or no are there any yes there happens? are there are so, things yeah, that will another, allow you yeah. to fix uh will allow you to fix morale so to speak well, so it's another it's a you know it's another as you layer. continue to learn you know you keep uncovering more and more right layers to the game and that's another layer so then you gain these these tactics and additional right. things that can kind of change that and i i do think that yeah, right. So, like, you might be able to still do something with a guy, even if they're yeah. shaken, if you have this if particular you have the relevant, relevant tactic things for involved. your army yeah. in, in stuff. So, so, that's the broad overview of the game. Um, we didn't hit... There's a lot more complexity, but, like I said, we're doing... We're taking... Excuse me. We're taking you through step by step. Yeah. So, this is... The first step is just playing a basic game. You know, yeah, like skip around like some of it might be like okay i get it or whatever two plus two is four and then sometimes it might be like okay wait yeah like this is something i wasn't completely understanding so we're just kind of doing it from that idea of like trying to cover all the bases of um something you might not completely understand or might be confused or might not just want to pull out from like a textbook right off right you know you kind of have a little bit so yeah and um, so we're gonna do that a little bit more as well with the individual. Yeah, guys yeah. We're gonna make parts. we're gonna make more videos talking about more in about depth your looks at all these kill things team as yeah. well, and how you would be a little bit more with like building these models initially, and whether or not you want to do it exactly according to the card, or if you want to make your own models with your own blank data cards here. And how all that interplays with your um, various abilities. Yep. But yeah, just one other uh, little side note with that, which I should probably say when we do that. But you know, you do want to like start to like remember who who each is guy who. Is. Yeah. <laughs> who is who is re- really it <laughs> you know, matters. Because at first, yeah, I did. Yeah. So you do also want to have some kind of little differences with how you build these guys or paint them or whatever that you kind of really go, yeah, this is Aptus. Because, because when if, Actus yeah, when gets it, a flesh when Actus wound... Actus is on here, you have to remember which guy on the yeah, board is that is one. Yeah. That, you know, has those certain abilities, yep. has the certain... Has the number of flesh wounds, or if they're shaken, or whatever. You have to go, okay, that's whatever. So, yeah. But, cool. Um, so there it is, guys. Uh, yeah, basic, that's basic. a basic overlook. Now, we did... Yeah, of yeah. course, we did not explain everything. What we're going to do now, we're going to take a break... Yeah. And then we're going to come back and uh, we're going to show you um, what a game looks like. And uh, so that way you can kind of see those things in action. We'll talk about it as we're playing. Okay. So uh, so that way you can see it all in action, kind of see it all put together. Um, and then, you know, uh, we'll go, like we said, we'll go into further, more in-depth things later. We just want to get you... The viewers, you guys started off into playing, yeah. so that way you have some context for some of these more advanced things later on. Okay, yeah. so uh, yeah, stay tuned after the break uh, to see the the game. All right. <laughs>
each other. Okay.